The next step in learning about propositional logic is to learn about how there are some key expressions that can be translated by something called logical operators. So if you take a look at our previous work, you see that there are things like this, these expressions. It is not the case that, and, either or, if then, if and only if, that we didn't translate before. That's because we're going to use what are called logical operators. So now I'm going to tell you about each one of the logical operators. There are five of them. I'm going to give you their symbol, their name, their logical function, and a shorthand list of what they're used to translate. The list of things that they're used to translate is not an exhaustive list. That's why I say a shorthand list. So just to introduce you to the operators or symbols of propositional logic. The first one may look familiar to you. It usually goes above and to the left of a particular letter, almost like a negative sign in mathematics. You may also be familiar with it from your computer keyboard. It's called a tilde. And its logical function is negation. We'll get to use to translate in just a moment. The second logical operator is this. And like many of its fellows, it has a very obvious name. It's called the dot. The dot's logical function is conjunction or bringing things together. The tilde will make things negated or the opposite of what they are. The dot will bring them together. We'll see lots of examples of this in the future. The third symbol is this little V and it's called the wedge. Its logical function is not making things the opposite or bringing them together, it's putting them apart, disjunction. The fourth symbol is a sort of sideways U that's called the horseshoe. Its logical function is something called implication. So you'll see the first part of a statement like this with this operator, we'll say, we would say something like A implies B. There's a relationship of dependence there that we'll discuss more in the future. Then the last one is, as you can see from the picture, it has a very unsurprising name, again, the triple bar and its logical function is equivalence. And what's meant by that is um, making things equal. So you can think of it as a super equal sign. Now, if you will recall from the last video, we looked at a number of compound statements. It is not the case that Al-Qaeda is a humanitarian organization was simplified into it is not the case that A. Diane Reeves sings jazz and Christina Aguilera sings pop was simplified into D and C. Um, in the third example, either people get serious about conservation or energy prices will skyrocket became either P or E. In number four, if nations spurn international law, then future wars are guaranteed became if N, then F. And in number five, the Broncos will win if and only if they run the ball became B, if and only if R. However, you'll notice that we only symbolized what looked like entire statements. We did not symbolize these other expressions. We did not symbolize it is not the case that, and, either or, if then, or if and only if. That's because each one of those statements can be translated not by replacing it with a letter uh, to refer to it, but by one of the logical operators. So the tilde is normally used to translate the word not or the phrase, it is not the case that.
The dot is used to translate and, here I'll try to draw a little line between them so that they're a bit easier to see. The dot in conjunction, it translates and, the word and, the word also, or moreover. The wedge, the word or, or unless. The horseshoe translates if, then, that phrase, and also the phrase only if, and the, hor the triple bar translates the phrase if and only if. Now, there is a more exhaustive list of things that op the operators are used to translate on page 319. So see also page 319 in your textbook. It's in a sort of tan box just before exercise 6.1, that summary. So if we were to go back and take a look at those compound statements that we saw earlier, we would see that we could now change these from, we can simplify them even further into better standard form. So it is not the case that A would become tilde A. Just as simple as that. D and C would become D and C. So the phrase, it is not the case, that was translated by using the operator in its place, and the and becomes the dot. The either or becomes the wedge, making it P or E. If N then F becomes N horseshoe F, and B, if and only if R, becomes B triple bar R. So you're not only looking to translate statements, but also the other part of those compound statements that could be translated by the operators. I'll show you more examples of this in the next video.